Here you go. Are you best friends again? <gasps> no! We're not best friends again. Not yet, anyway. <sighs> Hello, Muck Tuck. How doing? Would you like a present? What the flip? Why is no one leveling up, bro? What is that about? We can bring up with judo. Which bramble vine? Let's get that. There. We've just seen how much it is, and we might need to do another potion. I don't know. Hello. We're gonna hang out. We went shopping last time, so. Let's see what we're doing today. Sylvia, I'm troubled, and I could use a spot of advice. I overheard some of my people. They were questioning my qualifications. They suggested that I'm only good for pushing papers, that I have no idea what it's like to do what they do. And after I found such marvels at the market too, I thought for certain the instantaneous coffee would win them over. I need the heroes in my employ to respect me, if I'm to have any hope of keeping our numbers up, but I'm unsure how to go about earning that respect. Um, punish them. Uh, get drinks with them. You know, loosen up and show them you're relatable. Fraternising isn't a terrible idea, although I'd worry about losing too much authority. I want to be liked. But I am the boss. I think instead, my way forward is to prove them wrong. To show them that I can handle myself in the field. Isn't that dangerous? That's what I was thinking, like, if he went on patrol and then got stabbed, that was it. Done so. That's rather the point. I have to prove that I understand the danger. Only then will I have the right to send others into the line of fire. I confess, I'd rather spend the day catching up on chores. But sometimes, there can be no forward momentum without first giving up some ground. I suppose it's a technique you could use in your own negotiations. Compromise. Raise interest to the next level. Permanently block the highest available level of interest. Oh, that, That's a whole interest level. But you block the highest of... I mean... You know? Yeah, no kidding. My whole life is about compromise. Then I hope you won't put too much of a fight when I insist you join me on patrol. Onward. Where are we going, bitch? It's not so bad out here, is it? I mean, there's an awful lot of dirt, but so far nothing's tried to eat us. But hold. What's that rustling in yonder bush? Oh my god, look at it, it's so cute! Baptiste steps in front of Sylvia just as a slime leaps into the clearing. Sylvia freezes, unsure what to do. She has no experience fighting slimes, but neither does Baptiste. Should she help somehow? Before Sylvia can act, Baptiste pulls a pair of daggers from his boots. He lunges forward, slashing with his twin blades. The slime is cut to oozy ribbons in a matter of seconds. Oh. <gasps> well, I wasn't expecting to run into trouble quite so soon. Consider it dispatched. I wanna say, <laughs> I wanna say that's hot, but I'm I'm taken. I'm taken. That was impressive. I didn't even realise you were armed. I pride myself on being prepared for any eventuality. Now, let me harvest anything that might be of use from the remains. And then we're picnic. Is a picnic usually part of patrol duty? Well, no, but I think I've sufficiently proven myself, and there's no sense in letting the caviar I bought go bad. Oh, up until now, I've only ever used fish eggs for potions. <laughs> then that settles it. We must picnic forthwith. Because caviar can turn quickly, and what a shame it would be for us to vanquish a slimy foe. Only to be vanquished in turn by spoilt row. <laughs> God's sake. <laughs> uh... Funny. 
Oh, we can rank up again. Let's go. I wonder what level we're at with these guys. I guess we can check at the end of the day when I check my dock. I hope you can overlook the throbbing vein in my temple, Sylvia. Generally, I'm quite good at keeping my composure when upset, but that vein will betray me every time. Say for a spot of tea, I'm brewing some as we speak. Baptiste sets out cups and saucers of delicate porcelain. They gleam even in the low light of the guild hall. Sylvia finds herself suddenly excited. Baptiste's version of tea time is clearly a cut above anything she's experienced. Baptiste pours and Sylvia takes a sip. Careful, it's hot. The warning is too late and misleading. Baptiste isn't referring to the temperature of the tea, but its flavour profile. Is... is tea supposed to burn like this? Why is it spicy? Why is it spicy? It's an interesting variety I found at the marketplace. It was quite inexpensive, and it also varnishes brooms. Sugar helps. The tea is... great, but why don't you tell me what got you upset? As a matter of fact, I'm just back from seeing Quinn. Ha, <laughs> yeah, Quinn can have that effect. I know they're a friend of yours, so I thought of them when it came time to sell. Bits I'd harvested from the that forest slime. And would you believe it? Quinn offered me next to nothing for my goods. Quinn wouldn't try to rip you off. They're gruff, to be honest. They're gruff, but honest, and they know their stuff. Oh, I realised that, because after seeing Quinn, I went to three other merchants. They all gave me a similar quote. Low-level monster guts just aren't worth all that much. And they're worth less every day, as we gain access to more potent and dangerous reagents. I did the math, Sylvia. A hero would have to bag 30 of these things to afford a single meal. Well, you're used to pretty exorbitant meals, but I take your point. It's hard to work. It's hard work to be a hero. I knew it was hard work. I knew it was dangerous work. I had naively assumed the compensation would reflect that. So heroes don't get any sort of salary? The guild pays each hero a token stipend. The sum is so small, it's mostly formality. The bulk of a hero's income is meant to come from quest fees and from the loot they sell. That can be lucrative in theory. Every once in a while, a hero will stumble upon a genuine treasure trove. But statistically speaking, they're twice as likely to be struck by lightning and three times as likely to be implanted with a subcap subcantious egg sac. And then, of course, if they do strike gold, the guild always gets a substantial cut. It sounds like the solution is simple. The smaller the guild's cut, the more gold you're putting into the pockets of the heroes. If only it was as easy as that, alas. The Heroes Guild is a for-profit enterprise. It's a machine designed to generate revenue and to put the revenue into the hands of the stakeholders. Meaning your family? That's right. They've invested quite a lot to get this chapter up and running, an endeavour such as this. It isn't inexpensive. And they expect to see a significant return on their investment. So far, everything appears to be on track. If the guild is a machine, then it is a very efficient one. Therefore, from the company's point of view, nothing at all is wrong. Everything is working precisely as intended. Voluntary reducing our profit in order to enrich our contractors? Out of the goodness of our hearts? It simply isn't done. It flies in the face of the company's entire purpose. But morale is obviously important to you, even if there isn't a line for it on the company ledgers. That's the truth, and it's the crux of my dilemma. But while I don't yet have any answers, I feel hopeful. After all, it's only after a problem's been identified that it can be resolved. The trick now is to simply find a common ground, the best way to ensure everybody comes away satisfied. Oh my god, he's like, hey buddy. Reduce stress applied by customer by 50%. I can see how that philosophy could work for me too. You're already doing it, after all. You and I come from different worlds. But you have always felt like a kindred spirit. Ditto, pal. I'm glad we're so simpatico. We're definitely agreed on the quality of the tea, then. Uh, because I noticed you haven't touched yours in a few minutes, and I feel we should drink it down quickly. Before it melts my good porcelain. If that shines brooms, 
polish his broom, she probably shouldn't drink it. Just saying. I'm just saying. You probably shouldn't drink it if that's the case, you know? So we've got one day left. We've got one day left. What do I want to do? I'm just thinking. I want Mint to get her weapon. But I think I'm more interested in Saffron's story. And we only have one day left. So I'm going to hang out with Saffron, I think. I'm sorry, Mint. I want to know all their stories. It's not fair. Hey, uh, we're going to hang out if that's okay. I'm just going to hang out a little bit. Saffron and Sylvia return to the remote grove while Sylvia screams herself raw. Saffron joins in and the trees themselves seem to shake with the intensity of their combined voices. You might need to find a more secluded grove just to give these trees a respite and to avoid any unwanted avalanches. Sylvia is a fair amount closer to Saffron and moderately less stressed. Let's go. Now it's going to shake me home, right? Oh, no. We won't have time. I don't think we'll have time to upgrade any of them. Damn it! Because I'll have to make potions as well, won't I? Where's my duck? Yeah, so you're five, you're ten, you're six, she's eight. Oh, one, two, four, six, uh, five, one, ten. Oh, this is so sad. I just want to be friends with them all. Ooh, uh. God damn it. Let's travel. Okay. Oh, yes, let's go. So this is nine. Oh, so hopefully we'll give her a present and then we can cook the potion really quick, maybe. I'm all set of materials for my pipe. I'll go out on a limb and guess you don't buy a tobacco at the marketplace. This actually isn't tobacco at all, just a soothing blend of flower petals and witch bramble. No wonder it smells so floral. Let me show you how I do it. Saffron pushes aside some foliage to reveal a small workstation. Hold on. Gonna... Oh. Okay, we're good. Among the tools on display, Sylvia recognises a mortar and a pestle, and a small fermenter. Until recently, I reused old jars for, me for, for, for fermentation, but Muktuk's craftsmanship is second to none. I'm sure he's told you so himself. You want to take a spin with the pestle while I cycle out the fermenter? Make it nice and fine? Dried fairy flowers hang from a line that runs between tree branches. Saffron reaches up and plucks a few petals. She places the brittle petals and a pinch of bramble vine into the mortar which she then hands to Sylvia. Sylvia gets to work grinding the materials down. The repetitive motion and the sound of the clinking pestle lull her into a peaceful haze. It's kind of relaxing, isn't it? Small work with the hands can be meditative. <laughs> Particularly if you are the type to enjoy sitting still. And we both know you don't like being idle. The smell is soothing too. Maybe I should take a puff from your pipe. Oh, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Even if it isn't tobacco, the smoke isn't good for your lungs. I know that might sound hypocritical of me, but as a fey being, I have less to worry about. Humans are fragile, and I'd like to keep you in one piece. Thanks for looking out on me. Thanks for looking out for me. You're a good influence. I'm glad you didn't take offense, if I'm honest. 
This touches on a topic I've been dwelling on lately. I'm not sure exactly how to put this. Not to be a total mimic, but remember to breathe? That's right, of course, that's right. Managing stress brings serenity of mind and vice versa. Uh, draw five cards can only be played if stress level is less than 20%. See, you've taught me a lot. I'm glad about that. And glad for the reminder that I can speak openly with you. Here's what has me troubled. You're human, Sylvia, and I'm not. My lifespan is longer than yours. My body is more resilient. I'm not immortal by any means, but get fucked, you're gonna die first. Chances are, I'll still be here when you're gone. Given my history, I'm sure you can imagine how that makes me feel. The good stuff is worth some hurt. I mean, what's the alternative? You said you don't want to hide away, and that means taking the good and the bad as it comes. That's certainly wise. It's hard to argue that I would be better off I'm feeling than alone. I was content in my solitudes these last few years, but now that I know what I was missing, there's no going back. So I'm not suggesting that we should stop spending time together. Not at all. That's a relief. Hey, I'm not one for drama, you know that. I'm only trying to be honest about my fears. And if I'm overprotective at times, or if I ever seem like I'm trying to push you away, I hope you'll at least know where I'm coming from. Not a place of callousness, quite the opposite. I know you care about me. Good, don't forget it. Please be patient with me, Sylvia. You, this, it's an adjustment for me. It might take some time to get used to it. I want Saffron to understand that I'm not expecting her to move at anyone's pace but her own. Words don't seem sufficient, so how about a meaningful gesture? <laughs> Ego. Fire tonic and an ice tonic. Hold on, let me write that down. <laughs> we'll have to make these potions a sappy, bro. Fire tonic and ice tonic. Cool. So we've gone to level 9. So now I need to make these potions. Okay. Okay, so let's go home and see what we need. Hopefully I have the stuff we need. Um whoops. Custom orders. So I need to be superior, okay. Okie dokie. So, we've got this. Let's go. That's all ready. Um, brew. Let me brew. Nice. Fire tonic. A and C. Okay. Do we have any A and Cs in the building? What A's? S to make A and C. And then what have we got? A and D. That's A and D. Got one of them. So now we need more D. Which we can do, I think. Got one of these as well. That adds B, but that's fine. Why? I was gonna say. <laughs> Why? That's D. Superior. 
need more deer if possible. Losing a star on completion. That's fine. If losing a star is all we do, then that's unfine. Hold on. We have to at least get to here. There to be safe. One. It has to be one. Okay. Um. What can we do for one turn? I guess we can travel and then come back. 